Clarissa's buffs make me finally take a look at how to set up a one-shot with her. Turns out it's actually not that hard, and she does have some advantages over SSB and Aria, so she has her disadvantages as well. She's much easier to obtain than SSB and Aria, and her S3's death break can actually increase her win rate past what SSB and Aria can achieve. The downsides are that SSB does more damage than Clarissa and is thus easier to gear, even considering Clarissa's team attack percent imprint, while Aria actually has PvP usage. Despite this, I'd still say that at this point in the game, Clarissa is the best wave 1 AoE for Wyvern one-shot. Aria would need a completely different build for PvE, though if you only plan on one-shotting Wyvern during buff events and don't mind changing her gear, she's still a really good option. SSB on the other hand, would need you to invest a slot on her in a custom group summon, which is absolutely not worth it. Her only real PvE usage was in a Wyvern one-shot, which now gets fulfilled by Clarissa, and the ease of gearing isn't really a huge factor since Clarissa isn't super hard to gear. Her PvP usage is pretty much non-existent at this point as well. This video is going to focus exclusively on Clarissa. If you want to see SSB and Aria setups, you can check the video in the description. First, let's take a look at the Clarissa buffs. The damage dealt increased on her S3 is a 0.05 attack scaling increase, which ends up being about 2-2.5 two two rolls worth of stats. This isn't game breaking, but it does lessen her gear requirements by a good amount. After Clarissa kills the big mob in wave 1, she gives herself rage buff, which has been increased from 10% attack and speed to 20%. The attack isn't relevant, since you don't get this buff until after Clarissa uses S3, it doesn't make clearing the wave any easier. However, the speed buff is relevant, because this now lets you cut Sangelica in wave 2, which means that you can land Deathbreak before Sangelica goes and increase your win rate. Her S3 now also has a cooldown reset, and the Deathbreak chance has been increased from 50% to 70%. This just makes it a little bit easier for you to land Deathbreak on wave 2, giving you a 70% chance instead of a 50% chance. One big difference with Clarissa is that SSB and Aria both need the mobs to hit them after they use their S3s, which means that they have to be faster than the small mobs or the run is going to fail. Clarissa, on the other hand, kills wave 1 completely by herself, so it doesn't matter whether the small moves first. This means that we can slow her down a ton and invest all of those speed rolls into damage instead. You still do want to outspeed the big mob though, because if you don't, it'll put you at a much larger risk of dying on wave 1, and if you're using Warhorn, it'll make your Deathbreaker cut Clarissa, which ends your run. With a plus 30 Warhorn, SSS Imprint Sangelica, and a plus 30 Portrait of the Saviors, Clarissa needs 4,365 attack and 350 crit damage to kill Wave 1 without using Torrent Set. If you are using Torrent Set, then you can drop down to 4,029 attack and 350 crit damage. You can check on the damage calculator in the description if you have higher attack and lower crit damage to see if you kill or not. Also, if you're missing any of these artifacts or imprints, then your damage will be lower and you'll need to up it, and you can use the damage calculator to check to see if you kill as well. For speed requirements, it'll vary a bit depending on how fast Angelica is. I'll elaborate on this later in the speed tuning section, but in general, you'll want to be at least 158 speed. I also recommend putting a little bit of stats in the bulk just in case both small snakes target Clarissa and manage to hit her. Just 2-3 to three rolls in HP or defense is going to be enough to not die. Lastly, you should also try to aim for 65 effectiveness on Clarissa if you're able to and her EE should be her S3 damage increase EE. If you don't have Portrait of the Saviors due to it being a limited artifact, you can use Exorcist Tonfa. It is a lower damage boost though, so you're going to need better gear to make up for it. Also, when you're skill enhancing your Clarissa, you only need to enhance S3. Her S2, even at plus zero, if you do enough damage to kill the big mob in the back, you're guaranteed to clear the wave. Next, let's look at Sangelica. She wants the usual 200 FRS to resist Wyvern strips, but since Clarissa has been greatly slowed down, we can look to slow down Sangelica as well. In general, you'll want Sangelica to be at least 9 speed faster than Clarissa, and if your Clarissa is somehow over 171 speed, then you'll need at least 10 speed. Depending on how restricted your Clarissa gear is, you might want to make Sangelica even faster to put up speed buff earlier. This would let you skip on a couple of speed on Clarissa. For more details, you can check the speed tuning section later. You also want to make sure that Sangelica isn't too fast if possible, so that your Deathbreaker can move before Sangelica does in wave 2. Ideally, you also want 15F and her S3F buff EE, but it's not absolutely mandatory. For artifacts, any stat boosting artifact is ideal, such as Midnight Bloom, Super Duper Water Shooter, Card of Small Miracles, or even Levelin's Official Beach Volleyball. These are all artifacts from older side stories, which can be found in the Book of Memories. Midnight Bloom is the recommended one since it gives the largest stat increase. Your Deathbreaker needs 65F, enough bulk to not die in wave 1 in case both mobs target them, and enough speed to cut Sangelica in wave 2. 
while also not cutting Clarissa in Wave 1. Ken is the best choice in all cases. For Rem comps, he has a higher death break rate than Camilla, and for Secret comps, he's both lower investment and higher damage typically than Karin. The S2 dual attack EE is mandatory though. For speed, you'll want to be at least 9 speed slower than Clarissa. If she's under 160 speed, then you can be 8 speed slower and be fine. Also, you'll want to be fast enough to cut Sangelica in wave 2, as usual, which is just Sangelica's speed divided by 1.25. You have a lot of wiggle room, so it shouldn't be too hard. For Artifact, you'll ideally want to use Warhorn, but any of the artifacts listed for Sangelica earlier work fine as well. Ken and Clarissa can also use Sword of Autumn Eclipse. Camilla's build can be the exact same as Ken's, just with a little bit more bulk due to her lower base stats. Karn matches Ken's speed, but she needs to be built with damage, since she doesn't have a dual attack, so she's dealing all the damage by herself. This is also why I don't really like Karn as a deathbreaker, since she needs to be heavily overinvested in, and she doesn't really do anything outside of Wyvern one shot. Last up are the nuker options, Rem and Sigrid. They just want to stack as much damage as possible and have at least 121 speed to make sure Wyvern doesn't cut them before they get to go. Due to their higher base stats, they won't really be at a risk of dying on wave 1, though Sigrid probably wants at least one roll into death for HP. Rem's the best option, since her S1 applies death break and her demon mode buff lets her ignore Ephra's. This lets Rem comps go way past 85% win rate, all the way up to over 99%. Now, assuming you're using Ken as your death breaker, this Rage Pen Rem is over 99% win rate regardless of Clarissa gear, while this triple crit set Rem is between 96 and 98.5% win rate. I'll be going into more detail in the Rem win rate section later. Rem is a collab unit though, so Sigurd is a much more accessible alternative. Previously in the SSB slash Aria setup, I mentioned that Sigurd needs just the bare minimum damage to kill Wyvern. But with Clarissa, if you're able to hit certain damage breakpoints on Sigurd, you can actually increase your win rate past 85%. I'll go over this in more detail in the Sigurd win rate section later. For now, this is a much worse geared Sigurd, which would have overkilled Wyvern by a little over 9000 with just death break. Her EE should be her S1 damage increase EE, since she's using dual attacks and none of the other ones really increase her damage. Okay, now let's go over the most complicated part of gearing, the speed tuning. A quick disclaimer, this section was done using math, but Epic 7 doesn't calculate CR with exact precision. There are certain tunings that should be safe, but very rarely are not. Basically, these calculations are safe in theory, but not necessarily in practice. You can adjust by a couple of speed into more safe zones if you want to. The optimal speed tuning for Wyvern 13 one shot should look something like this. Sangelica is going to use her S3, and then Clarissa is going to use her S3 before the big mob manages to move and clear the entire wave by herself. It doesn't matter whether the small mob move before Sangelica does or Clarissa. Going into wave 2, Ken and Clarissa should move first and then Sangelica. It doesn't matter whether Ken or Clarissa goes first on wave 2, as long as they both move before Sangelica does. This is to maximize the win rate. Clarissa is going to be the hardest one to gear overall, so you're going to want to gear her first and then tune your Ken and Sangelica around her. The big mob in wave 1 is 154 speed, but Sangelica's speed buff means that we can slow down Clarissa more than usual. Sangelica needs to be at least 5% faster than Clarissa which is typically just going to be at least 9 speed faster. Starting from 161 speed, any Clarissa at this speed or higher should be guaranteed to outspeed the big mob if Sangelica moves first. Here's a full list of Clarissa speeds and necessary Sangelica speeds in order to outspeed the big mob. If Clarissa is the speed on the left, Sangelica needs to be at least the speed on the right for Clarissa to always cut the big mob. The first thing to note is as mentioned earlier, you might want to aim for speed slightly higher than what's listed here just to be safe due to CR being a bit weird in Epic 7 sometimes. These are the absolute worst case scenarios for CR RNG though, with Clarissa getting 0% CR and the Big Bob getting 5%, so they're not going to happen too often. A couple of notable breakpoints are 158 speed, or any slower and Clarissa is not going to be able to cut Sangelica in wave 2 anymore, lowering your win rate, 157 speed, or any slower and Ken now needs Warhorn in order to always cut Sangelica on wave 2 and 152 or 153 speed, where Ken, even with Warhorn, won't be able to cut Sangelica at all. In general, I'd recommend aiming for 161 to 159 speed. 158 speed is passable, but due to the CR calculations being imprecise sometimes, I try to go a bit higher. The yellow speeds are also passable if your gear is constrained, and any lower than that, I'd consider not one-shotting Wyvern. Once that's set up, you want Ken to be at least 9 speed slower than Clarissa. 
This is to make sure that Ken doesn't move before Clarissa does on wave 1. You also want him to cut Sinchelica on wave 2, keeping in mind the breakpoints where Sinchelica becomes too fast for Ken to outspeed her. This isn't too hard to calculate, you can just take Sinchelica's speed and divide it by 1.25. Ken should be slower than the result of that, and also be slower than the result of Clarissa's speed multiplied by 0.95. Next, we're going to look at the win rates of these comps. Your actual clear rate might be slightly higher than this due to RNG factors like Rem's S2 counter, Clarissa dual attacking off of Rem, or just good luck on Wyvern targeting even if you miss one too many death breaks. I'll be ignoring those factors for the sake of more clear results, but it is something to keep in mind. Your win rate's going to vary heavily depending on your speed tuning and how well geared your Rem and Clarissa are. At base, you have an 85% chance to, left to land death break with Ken, a 50% chance to land death break with Rem each time she hits with S1, and if you speed tune Clarissa properly, she can apply death break with her S3 as well, varying depending on how much effectiveness you have. Here's a win rate table assuming that your Clarissa is not able to cut Sangelica. Since Rem has ignore Ephra's death break on her S1, each time she dual attacks, she has a chance to land death break by herself, which means that the higher your Rem damage is, the more death breaks you're allowed to miss. This table should be read as, if you can land at least one of these death breaks, then you're able to clear the run. So if your Rem can still kill Wyvern even if you miss Ken's death break and the first two Rem death breaks, then you need to land at least one of Ken death break or the first three Rem death breaks, giving you a 98.125% win rate. Now let's look at the win rates with a speed tuned Clarissa. Ken is generally going to move before Clarissa, except maybe with some extremely precise speed tuning that I'm not even sure exists or not, so Clarissa's death break chance won't be factored until after Ken's turn. Also, Clarissa's S3 damage drops by about 18k damage without death break, so depending on your gear, the missing damage might prevent you from being able to utilize Clarissa's death break. The Rage Rem shown earlier can get away with missing Ken death break, Clarissa death break, and 3 Rem death breaks, giving it a win rate of either 99.19% with a 0F Clarissa, or 99.62% win rate with a 65F Clarissa. This scuffed gear Rem can miss 2 death breaks but needs Clarissa to land her death break, giving it a win rate of 96.78% or 98.48%. The win rates for a Camilla Rem team are going to look like this instead. Camilla's death break chance is much lower than Ken's, a 42.5% chance instead of an 85% chance, but it's pretty trivial to get to at least this Camilla plus 2 Rem level, so you're going to have at least an 85% win rate, which isn't too bad. And here's including Clarissa's S3 death break chance. Just like before, it's going to be a lower win rate than Ken's, but it's still pretty high. The difference between a 0F and 65F Clarissa is a bit more visible here though since the win rates are lower. Secret comps also finally get an increase in win rate. Clarissa moving poor Sigurd is mandatory for this though, and the amount of increases will depend on how well your Sigurd and Clarissa are geared. With just the bare minimum Sigurd gear, you'll have the standard 85% win rate if Ken lands death break. For this, it doesn't matter whether Clarissa or Sangelica go first, since the run will fail if Ken misses. However, if your Sigurd does enough damage, you can kill Wyvern off of Clarissa's death break, even if Ken misses his. With 0F on Clarissa, your win rate will increase to 88.675%. If you have 65F, then your win rate will be 93.925%. You should aim for being able to kill with just death break to maximize win rate, since Sigurd's S3 damage varies depending on how many debuffs are landed. But if your Clarissa has 65F, you'll have a 99.3% chance of landing a second debuff even with 0F on Sigrid. Here's the Rage Sigrid I used to test. I landed 4 debuffs, but I used the damage calculator to check what my damage would have been like with lower amounts. With 2 debuffs, she overkilled Wyvern by about 19,000 damage, and with just death break, it would have been about 12,000 damage. So you can definitely get away with way worse stats than what I used. I still highly recommend Rage Set and ideally Pen Set just to make gearing it a lot easier. The last factor for Sigurd's win rate is something I didn't even realize was possible, but it just happened to occur while I was testing the comp. It's a pretty minimal increase in win rate, and extremely hard to gear, so you can skip this section if you don't really care, I just think it's kind of funny. I don't have a clip since I wasn't expecting it, and I won't be getting one because the odds of me even having it happen are about 1%, but my Rage Sigurd managed to kill Wyvern with 0 death breaks. Due to her S3 death pen scaling, 6 debuffs just barely killed Wyvern. Not even cleanly, it died when the bleeds progged on its turn. Sangelica S1 has a 65% attack debuff, Clarissa S3 has 200% bleeds, and Secret S1 has 250% bleeds, with her using a twice via dual attacks. All of these debuffs are subject to 15% as well. That's a total of 7 debuffs, and if you have 65F on Clarissa and 65F on Secret, 
as well as a 15F on Miss Angelica with her S3 F buff E. This would increase your win rate by 0.6%. With 0F on Sacred, it would be completely negligible, only 0.009%. Getting 65F on Sacred with this damage is pretty annoying, so it's not really anything too important, just a small factor to consider. If you don't have the damage to kill with 60 buffs but can kill with 7, you'd get an amazing 0.079% increase in win rate with a 65F Sigrid. This is pretty much guaranteed to kill since my Sigrid with 7 debuffs almost one shots Wyvern from full HP. Lastly, while Karin would make it easier to land 6 debuffs and increase your win rate by either 1.65% with a 65F Sigrid or 0.36% with a 0F Sigrid, you'd have to heavily overinvest in Karin for her to be able to match Ken's damage and it's a pretty marginal increase in win rate, even with 65F on Sigrid, so this isn't really worth considering in my opinion, since Karn has little use in general. Okay, that was a lot, so let's summarize all the stats that you're going to need. Clarissa needs enough damage to one-shot wave 1, which is either 4,365 attack with 350 crit damage, or if you're using Torrent Set, you could drop down to 4,029 attack. She also wants to be at least 158 speed ideally, you can go down to at least 152, it's just going to come at the cost of some consistency. She also wants 2-3 to three defense or HP rolls so that she doesn't die on wave 1, and if possible, try to get your effectiveness as close to 65 as possible. Next up is Sinful Angelica. She's going to want at least 200 effect resistance to prevent Wyvern from stripping her immortality buff, and for her speed, you're just going to want to check the speed tuning section, because it's going to vary a lot depending on how fast Clarissa is. 15 effectiveness with her S3 F buff E is nice to have, but it's not mandatory at all. Now for your defense breaker, whether that's Ken, Camilla, or Karin, you're going to want at least 65 effectiveness and at least 9 speed slower than Clarissa, though you're also going to want to try to cut Sinjalica in wave 2. You also need enough defense and HP to not die in wave 1, and if you're using Karin, you have to have a lot of damage on her. Last up is your nuker option. Rem or Sigrid, whichever one you're using, it's the same build, just 121 speed at least, and as much damage as you can fit on them. The Clarissa buffs have made it both easier to gear and more beneficial to set up a Clarissa one-shot. This comes at a good time since Rift is going on hiatus for an unspecified period of time, but hopefully this helps anyone who needs to run hunts for other materials even when Rift is back online.